Welcome back to Editor's Roundtable. Anuj has also now joined us on the show. Anuj, just you know, before the break, Nimesh was telling us how we've seen a pickup in FI selling, <coughs> and there now appears to be a pretty tense battle between the FIs and DIIs. What's the data telling you? Actually, between FI and retail, uh, uh, Rima, which, which is the battle that I'm focusing on, and uh, it's like the classical David versus Goliath, right? Uh, <coughs> favorite versus the underdog. Uh, the good news is, uh, and I'll tell you the good news. Uh, for, for, first of all. Uh, look at the data point. The FI short position in India right now is at record high. But for every long, there's a short. Uh, or every short, there's a long, right? Uh, because the net open interest will be zero. So who's long versus this FI? If FI is shorting so much, if FI is 80% short, then who's buying this? It's retail. FI is a short by 1.15 lakh contracts. Retail is long by 1.6 lakh contracts. Uh, now to the good news. Uh, this has happened three times in the past. And what's been the score line? 3-0 to retail. Retail has won every time. It's actually trumped FII every time on this FNO data. The last time this happened was actually in June 2022, when the Nifty rallied 15% over a two-month period, when uh, retail was this much long and FII was this much short. Uh, previously, when was FII net short and retail net long in the market? <coughs> March 2020. The Nifty rallied 20% in two-month period. And before that, April 2018 is when FI has had more shots uh, than retail had long. Nifty rallied 10% over the next two months. Yeah. Uh, to, to stick my neck out, uh, I would say that uh, this time as well, it should be the retail because, uh, you know, the Indian uh, market's got its own factors going for it. And uh, the way the market's been taking support consistently at the 200-day moving average, it's advantage retail. And you know, uh, the, uh, the retail bit that you say, the MSC classified, the classifies it as client, right? Client, client, yes. client yes. And that client could include not just retail, H&I, like family, H &I, exactly. so you can actually call it smart money as well. Absolutely. I mean, the, the point here is that so, the local money, the local money uh, which local is individual smart. money, let me, let yeah. me put it this way, yeah. we classified retail, yeah. but uh, yeah, I mean, and uh, uh, why call it dumb money? It is actually the it smart money. It is the smart money. money. It is the it smart, is the smart money. money. But Prashant, what about China? I mean, can that... You know, from the US to China. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to uh, focus on what's happening there on uh, Sunday, this mm -hmm. Sunday. Let me actually uh, head across to the, uh, the big wall. Uh, so, this is basically, I don't know if all eyes are on China, but I think uh, many will be watching this closely for a very simple reason. Uh, the 20th Party Congress, when I say party, it's the Communist Party of China, which is the most important uh, sort of political entity in China, uh, which is having its uh, 20th Congress. Uh, which, it starts on Sunday, it's not a one-day event, it starts on Sunday. 2,300 delegates will attend uh, and, ele and elect what is called the Central Com Committee, which is the Politburo. Uh, and, of course, uh, it's standing committee as well. On Sunday, though, we will hear from President uh, Xi Jinping, who will deliver the political report. He'll take stock of what has happened. And then he will lay out the focus and key policy areas for the next five years. Uh, you know, so the, poli the, new, the new Politburo, the new Central Committee, which basically is made up of all the top government functions, the topmost uh, sort of, you know, ministers in China, that will be elected for the next five years. This will happen after... Uh, the, the, the Congress ends, I mean, there's a, uh, there's, there's a meeting which is held at the newly elected Central Committee and they uh, then <coughs> elect uh, the General Secretary, etc. Uh, this, is, this is the schedule. So Sunday is, of course, the uh, speech from uh, the President, Xi Jinping, the current President. Uh, the Congress mostly lasts for seven days, which means that the event gets over on the 22nd and on the 23rd is the election of the Politburo. One widely uh, sort of anticipated thing is that we will see the reappointment of Xi Jinping for the third time. I mean, some are saying that he'll basically become president for life. We'll see. There are also some other reports which indicate that he will, his status will be elevated. You know, he's the core leader. From core leader, he will become the people's leader. Now, that is a, that is a title which was last reserved for Mao Zedong. Uh, and, uh, you know, we'll see if uh, Xi Jinping actually gets that title as well, which basically means that He's got complete control of what's happening in China. Why is this important? Why do we bother with this from a market standpoint? Chinese, China is seeing some of its slowest pace of growth in decades right now, right? Uh, so, and China is a big consumer and, of course, a big spender of global economy. It carries weight and it's not carrying its weight right now because of the slowdown. Uh, the other point is uh, China's zero COVID policy. Will we see a shift from zero COVID to some tolerance level here? which means opening up of the economy, etc. Will we see an indication of that in the speech? Uh, Reprioritize growth, I think I already uh, sort of talked about this. Po property sector has been bleeding. The mantra in China has been properties for living, not for speculating. Will we see some change and more support to the property sector? 
And of course, we've seen a two-year-long crackdown on tech platforms in China. Can, will that ease up? Basically, more focus on economy. I'm not getting into the other stuff, which is foreign policy, et cetera, which, are, which I think many will watch very closely uh, as well. Uh, but I think we've got, uh, you know, Paul Schult joining us now of Schult Research. Paul, great to have you with us here. Thank you very much. <clears throat> you know, uh, we, we've spoken about uh, China before, but now ahead of this event, how significant uh, is this according to you, or you think it's going to be uh, not very important and we'll see more of the same? What's your sense? Uh, I think everything's baked in the cake. There's not going to be any surprises. Um, I, I think everyone knows what's going on. We know what the outcome's going to be. What is interesting to me is what happened this week from the point of view of the U.S. Uh, in the U.S., basically, we have had uh, three body blows to China in, like, really 72 hours. You've had the first one, which was that the U.S. is going to ban all semiconductors uh, um, predicated on uh, uh, permits <clears throat> from uh, the central government in Washington. Number two, you have had a ban on all products from Huawei and ZTE. And number three, and very importantly, Australia, along with the West, basically rejected China's entrance into this new TPP trade agreement. And so you've had a big body blow in terms of trade in um, America, technology access to um, inside China and a global trade agreement rejection um, by Australia. And so, you know, going into this political, politically charged environment, it's very tough to maneuver right now. And I'm sure China is infuriated by this. Paul, uh, it's all, it's all yeah. very negative. It's all <laughs> this is very negative. Yeah, it, it's it's all very negative. Uh, what about the U.S. Uh, with the are we at the cusp of a big rally in U.S. markets, Paul? Yeah, I, I've been pretty negative on your show the last couple of months, and it's been a really hard, awful, dreadful time. And I, I'm going to tell you, I feel much more positive. I think the the damage to if you talk to fi fixed income credit people, they're uh, tremendously worried, much more so than the equity people are, because they see. The, the credit markets and the fixed income markets sort of falling apart. And, and we're very close to sort of going over the waterfall in terms of liquidity, certainly in the UK, possibly in US Treasuries. You saw the warning by Yellen uh, just last night um, of warning the Fed about uh, liquidity problems in the, in the uh, Treasury market. I think uh, the Fed can say, look at inflation's high, we're going to pause, uh, we need to just look at things. Um, you don't want to, you know, England is America's closest partner. And the, the, the yeah. British, you know, guilt, guilt market is on the verge of collapsing. Yeah. So they're going to have to pull back here. I'm, I'm convinced. And I think there's going to be a very big rally. Paul, what about uh, the emerging markets? Because uh, India in particular has uh, uh, really managed to stand out as an outperformer. Yeah, exactly. So the last time I was with you, you know, I just said that, you know, that old Rudyard Kipling, if you can keep your head when all about you are using, losing yours, you're losing theirs, you know, um, you're in good shape. And so uh, Russia remains closed. China is a mess. Um, South Africa is sort of, uh, you know, um, hands off. Uh, Brazil is going through a very tricky election. And so, right, India is the last man standing of the BRICS, literally, right? I mean, these other uh, countries, Russia's going to be even more shut down now after what they did on Monday in Kiev. Uh, and I think um, China is going to be more shut down after what the U.S. did. And I think South Africa is problematic. And I think Brazil is also problematic. And so the, the, the opportunities are very limited. And I think now that the, if the Fed can hold off, the dollar will weaken a little bit. And, and you'll get some oxygen uh, put into the room of these emerging markets, and you won't have so much downward pressure on, on the rupee. I think that's what's going to happen. Paul, great insights, but unfortunately, we're out of time. And big thank you from the entire team of CNBC TV 18, and wish everyone a fabulous weekend.